टुडे वी विल डिस्कस वेरियस ओस्टियोलॉजिकल टर्म्स फर्स्ट वी डिस्कस अबाउट वेरियस आर्टिकुलर सर्फेसेस एंड स्ट्रक्चर्स दीज आर इन्वॉल्व इन जॉइंट्स और आर्टिकुलेशन द फर्स्ट टर्म इज फैसेट ए स्मॉल फ्लैट आर्टिकुलर सर्फेस फॉर एग्जाम्पल आर्टिकुलर फैसेट्स इन भटिब्रा यू कैन सी दिस इज भटिब्रा यू कैन सी दिस वन टू दिस सर्फेस ओके तो लाइक वाइज दिस सर्फेस ओके दीज आर कॉल फैसेट दिस वन दीज आर कॉल फैसेट देन फोबिया an articular surface in the form of a very small pit or depression for example phobia capitis in head of the femur you can see so this is the head of the femur okay so here you will find a small pit like depression small pit depression this is called phobia or phobia capitis of the femur condyle a knuckle shaped articular prominence for example condyles of femur you can see this one so this is a condyle so this is the condyle of the femur this is the condyle of the femur at its distal end okay so these two are the condyles knuckle shaped articular prominence then trochlea a grooved pulley shaped articular surface for example trochlea of the humerus trochlea of the femur you can see this structure okay so this structure is the trochlea of the humerus you can see somewhat pulley shaped structure is the grooved and this structure this one so this structure so this is the trochlea of the femur a grooved pulley shaped articular surface then glenoid cavity is shallow means not very deep articular depression example glenoid cavity of the scapula so you can see this one this whole structure okay this is called glenoid cavity of the scapula then cotyloid cavity or acetabulum a deep articular socket for example acetabulum of hip bone you can see this one okay this one is the acetabulum of the hip bone it articulates with the head of the femur to form hip joint in this socket what happen the head of the femur will articulates and there is hip joint formation of hip, hip joint then we discuss various non articular projections these are raised area or protrusions on the bones they are not involved in the joint formation these are non articular projections first tubercle tubercle a small blunt projection for example teres tubercle of humerus you can see this is the sept of the humerus so here you can find a structure this one okay so this structure this structure is called tubercle a small blunt projection this structure is called tubercle very specific the name is teres tubercle of humerus tuberosity a large rounded uneven projection for example deltoid tuberosity of humerus you can see this one this structure so this structure is the tuberosity very specific here it is deltoid tuberosity of the humerus tuberosity then trochanter a very large non articular prominence trochanter of femur you can see so this structure so this structure is the trochanter of the Humor, trochanter. Structure is the trochanter. Now there is a comparison between tubercle, tuberosity, trochanter. Clear? Tubercle, a small blunt projection. Okay, so this is the tubercle. Okay, if it is more developed, it is called tuberosity. Means it is very less developed, tubercle. If it is more developed, tuberosity. For the large, largest of this type is trochanter. So tubercle is. a small blunt projection which if more developed is called a tuberosity while a trochanter is the largest of this so this one tubercle tuberosity and trochanter spine is sar pointed projection you can see this one so this is the scapular spine 
The structure is the scapular spine. Spine of the scapula. Crest. A sharp ridge or an elongated elevation. Iliac crest. You can see this one, this structure. Or this is the dorsal motor of the ilium. So this is called crest of ilium or iliac crest line. A faint elongated elevation. Example, gluteal line on the gluteal surface of ilium. So you can see this line. So this line, you can see this line. Here. Yeah. So this line is the your gluteal line. Linear. Almost these two terms have same. Linear. Narrow crest, ridge or line, a very small line. Then process, a general term for a bony projection. For example, zygomatic process of temporal bone. You can see. So this is the zygomatic process. Okay. So this is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Zygomatic process or process. Example of process. Epicondyle, a projection above a condyle. Epicondyles of humerus, so you can see here, so this structure, so this is a, so here you will find, so this is the condyle, okay, epi means above, epi means above, epicondyle, they are present above the condyle, so this structure is the condyle, so above this here you will find the epicondyle, so this is epicondyle, styloid process or styloid, a pencil shaped pointed projection, styloid process of alna, you can see this one, so this is the Allah bone. Okay. And you will find a pencil shaped pointed projection. Pencil shaped pointed projection. Tyloid process. Hornu or hemulus. A curved horn like process. Example. Cornu of hyoid bone. Okay. You can see the here. Greater cornu of the hyoid bone. Middle cornu of the hyoid bone. Small cornu of the hyoid bone. Cornu or hemulus, a curved horn-like process. Protuberance, prominence, eminence, torus. Various bony projections. For example, torus frontalis or frontal eminence of a frontal bone of the skull. Iliopubic eminence of oscoxy. So here you can see so this structure here. Okay. So frontal eminence or torus frontalis you will find here. Depressions and openings. A moderately deep depression. Foci of the scapula. Okay. So this one is called infraspinous fossa of the scapula. Okay. This is called supraspinous fossa of the scapula. Sulcus or groove. An elongated depression or concavity between two parallel ridges. Bicipital group of the humerus. You can see this one. So this is the groove. Bicipital group, sulcus or group, incisura, a notch like depression, semilunar notch of ulna. This one is the notch, or we can say incisura, foramen, a perforation or hole through a bone for the transmission or passage of vessels nerves. For example, infraorbital foramen of skull. In skull, you will find many foramen. When you study the skull, uh, we will discuss details. So you can say this is one foramen. Okay, this is one foramen. Infraorbital foramen of the skull. Cleft. A fissure in a bone. Intercondyloid cleft in metacarpal and metatarsal. These two are the condyles. Between them, you will find a fissure. So this is called cleft. So this structure is called cleft. Itis. Itis means a natural opening or fissure within a bony structure. For example, maxillary hiatus. Okay. It is the opening of the maxillary sinus. Okay. So here you can see here. So the inner structure is the maxillary sinus and its outer opening. Its outer opening is called your maxillary hiatus. Okay. So hiatus refers to a natural opening or fissure within a bony structure. Canal. A bony tunnel, foramen of some length, or a long tunnel like foramen. Usually, a passage for notable nerves or blood vessels. For example, mandibular canal. Here you can find this is the mandible bone. 
So here you can find the mental forum. Okay. So this is the outer surface. So inside this you will find a. So this is the external opening of a canal. This canal is called your mandibular canal actually. Okay. So this is the outer surface. Okay. So in this area just below this you will find a canal. That is called your mandibular canal. Meatus. A narrow passage. For example, external auditory meatus in temporal bone. You can find this one. This is meatus. External auditory meatus. A narrow passage. This is the opening actually. So it will lead to a narrow passage. So this is the opening here. It will lead to a narrow passage that is called external auditory meatus in temporal bone. Then sinus. An air cavity within the bone lined by mucous membrane. You will find various sinuses in the skull. For example, you can see this one. This is one example. This is the frontal sinus in the skull. Lamina. A thin plate of bone. Example, lamina of vertebral arch. You can see this one. This whole structure is the vertebral arch. You can see this is the, the this is actually the neural canal. On the roof, you will find the lamina, a thin plate of bone. This is the lamina, a thin plate of bone. Then structural components of bones. These terms describe the basically geometry of the bone. First head. A rounded articular enlargement at the proximal end of a bone. That is called head. So you can see this is the head. And below that you will find a narrow constricted region. This is called neck. So this is head and below that you will find the neck. Then body or corpus. The largest or the principal part of a bone. Body of a vertebra. You can see this one. So this is the body of the vertebra. Angle. Corner of a bone. Found between two borders. For example, ang uh, angles of scapula, you can see. So this is one border. This is one border. Okay. So now this is one border and this is one border. Details, uh, when we discuss scapula, I will tell the name. Just now only the what is the meaning of angle actually. So this is one border and this is one border. So this is the angle. Like with this is one angle. Okay. Like here you will find one angle. Angle corner of bone found between two borders, angles of scapula. Border, the edge or margin of a bone usually applied to a flat bone. You can see these are the borders. So this is one border, okay. This is one border and this is one border. So these are the borders. Borders of scapula. Manubrium, a handle-like flat projection. Manubrium of sternum, so this structure. This is called manubrium of the sternum. Handle like flat projection. Fontanel. A soft, unossified region in the infant skull. Example, anterior fontanel. You can find, you can see this area. So, in this area, the bone is unossified. Very soft. Okay, very soft. This part. So, this is called your fontanel. A soft, unossified region in the infant skull. Symphysis, a union in which two similar bones are firmly connected by a piece of cartilage. Pelvic symphysis, so you can see this is the pelvic symphysis. Articular process, a bony projection forming joint. Articular processes of vertebra, you can see. So, these are the articular processes. So, this one and this one. Here and together they form the joint. Okay, whether they form the joint. So these are the articular processes of vertebra. Articulation means joint. Articulation. The point of contact between the bones. You can see. The point of contact between the bones. So this one is called radius and ulna. So this one is called your radio ulnar articulation. Okay. Humero radial articulation. Distal end of the humerus. Proximal end of the radius. So this point is called Immero radial articulation. Suture. Immovable joint between cranial bones. Okay. For example, frontal suture. You can see these two are the cranial bones. And this is the suture. Okay. This is called the frontal suture. Labyrinth. A complex 
cavity within a bone. For example, bony labyrinth of temporal bone inside which inner ear present. Okay, so you can say so this part. Okay, when we discuss ear, we will study. This part is called actually your membranous labyrinth. Okay, it is a part of the inner ear. It is present inside the complex cavity. You can see this the cavity. The cavity is, is present in the petrous part of the temporal bone. Okay, so this cavity is called actually labyrinth. Labyrinth. Okay, means this whole structure. This whole structure is the your petrous part of the temporal bone. It is a complex cavity. So this cavity, this cavity is called bony labyrinth or labyrinth. Okay, inside which you will find the membranous labyrinth, the soft part of the internal ear. Clear? So this this is called labyrinth. Ramus, a projecting arm-like part. Projecting arm-like part. This one. Ramus. Ramus of mandible. 